Hello, my name's James and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. Today we're going to have a very quick look about how we can improve the BTU, or the British Thermal Units, going into a kitchen, because the kitchen we're in at the moment hasn't really got any walls that are big enough to put another radiator on. We've got a little radiator over there just out of shot, but the only wall we've really got that's viable to increase the BTU here is this little wall here. If we measure this wall at the moment, we're going to see that we've only got about 43 centimetres of wall to play with. So we've got a very narrow bit of wall to go on. So the thing we need to do is basically get a column radiator that's double panelled, but also very tall, say about 1800 mil. Uh, we've got two heating pipes just on the other side of this wall here, which make this job very convenient. So we know we can pipe up to the heating system. We've already drained the whole heating system out and turned all the water off and we're ready to go basically. So what I'm going to do is firstly get these two little hooks off here and we'll bring the new radiator in and you can see us unbox it and basically get it ready to hang on the wall. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you need any help, just comment in the comment section below. So here we go, we've got the radiator that we're going to put in here. This is an 1800 by 305 millimetre wide rad. It's a very narrow radiator, it's very tall, so it has a very, very high British thermal unit output. Uh, it's also a rounded rectangle tube radiator made of aluminium. Uh, if you're worried about the inhibitor that you're going to put into the system afterwards, just make sure that the inhibitor you shove in is going to be compatible with the aluminium and all the other types of metals you can get in the heating system. So, we're just going to unbox this one here. I hope you can notice as well how well boxed up this radiator is. It's almost in a coffin. I've never actually seen anything so well packaged. Make sure when you're unpacking any radiator that you keep all the gubbins to one side so you don't lose it for later on in the job. So then, we've got our new radiator undone and uh, unpacked and I must say I'm really, really pleased with it. It's got this lovely finish to it, like an effervescent kind of finish. Uh, and it's going to do a really, really good job and fit in really well with this kitchen. A few things you need to look at with this particular type of radiator is they're actually very versatile. We've got a, a blanking plug here and a blanking plug here that have both been taken out. But if you've got a uh, difficulty actually getting radiator valves on the end, uh, anything like that, you can whip out one of these bungs and pop that there. And also what you'd have to do is put a slight diverter in the pipe there as well to make sure that it goes evenly around the radiator. We're not going to need to do that on this job because we've actually supplied some very special radiator valves to go with it so they don't stick out the side. They're called Realm Corner TRVs and if you think that this is the insert that goes inside the rad here and our pipe wants to go back through the wall like that, as you can see that keeps the TRV head well tucked in underneath the radiator and also not protruding out the side because obviously we've got a problem with the wall width here. So what I'm going to do now is get this ready to hang on the wall. We're going to put both our stubs in here, make sure that we can drill our two holes through the wall nice and evenly and so there's no problems there. And then we can move on to the next stage of actually showing you how to pipe the radiator up. It's also worth noting as well that you've got some stickers on the bottom and the top of the radiator that denote where you can bring the hot water in. It's very important you do this the right way round because the radiator, and especially column radiators, have a small diverter in them so the heat is even distributed around the whole of the vertical radiator. So make sure you know which side you're going to be bringing your hot in, make sure you know which side your flow is going to be and then you can move on and pipe it up. Right so we're just going to get our radiator inserts on here just like so. Just put a bit of PTFE on our thread and get them tightened up. Because we're going into aluminium as well it's probably a very good idea you don't over tighten these fittings as they go in because you don't want to damage the outside of the actual fitting itself. I'd also like you to notice as well that we've got a kind of cavity in here and that's all going to get hot and cold air is going to come under here and get pushed out of hot air at the top giving the BTU output a real boost as well. Now that we've got the radiator ready to install we can look about how we're going to install our brackets. Uh, these radiators are supplied with all their own screws and plugs as you can see, nice lovely yellow plugs and really really big chunky screws so you don't have to worry about fixing problems. Now the easy way to look at how you install the brackets for one of these radiators is to think that the centre of the bracket is the centre of the first inside rung on the column rad. We've done videos before on how to install column radiators and do the brackets for them so we're not going to go into in-depth reason about how we're going to do them now but you can just watch us in sped up motion as we do it for you. I hope you enjoy watching us struggle away.
Right, so now we know that it's hanging up on the wall okay, it's nice and straight. I can pop my little decorative shrouds that go over the top of each one of the columns and make the radiator look lovely. So there, as you can see, we've got our radiator installed here. Now the next part we need to do is just go down, pop our two rad valves on and then drill our holes through the wall, ready to connect up to the two pipes that are just through here. So there we go, as you can see that we've got these two valves in here absolutely beautifully at the moment. I'm really, really pleased with how this job's going. And if we look at it from above here, you'll never actually know that there were two pipes going through the wall. I mean, the, the amount of pipe work that's actually sticking out the wall at the moment is really, really minimal. So now we've just got to go back into here and then connect these two pipes to the 222 mil flow and returns for the heating system. I'm going to pop a couple of valves on there as well. So if there's any more problems with the radiator in the future, they can valve that off and just drain that down on its own. So instead of looking like this, it will look a little bit more like this. So we've got our two uh, valves just down here. As you can see, we've got our two isolation valves there so we can shut off the radiator there. And then we've got a little drain as well. So if you've got any problems with that particular radiator, we don't need to drain the whole heating system out. We can just shut those two valves off there and drain it out from that little drain off. So once we've got all that other side tightened up and soldered in, we can just nip up these two valves here. Just make sure we don't need to over tighten these too much. Uh, if, it, if it does have a little weep, you can just tighten them up later on in a minute. Uh, then what we're going to do is just pop on our TRD head. Now this is the great thing, if we'd have used any other type of valve, this would have been sticking out here or at the bottom or out there like that. But because we've used this special type of valve here, I can have our little face, our indicator just pointing up to the user and also the TRV head then is located nice and snugly out of the way. And even better, it's actually getting a much more accurate reading of the room temperature because it hasn't got the radiant heat from the radiator coming next to it or anything like that. Most of that heat's going to go up because obviously heat rises. So now all I've got to do is just hoover up around here, clear up, fill the heating system up and get it finished. So there we go, we're all done. We've cleaned up everything. We've got the radiator nice and filled up now. It's lovely and warm and the system's working really, really well. And I'm really, really pleased with this installation. I think you'll agree, not only does it work in an ergonomic way by obviously giving out loads more heat, heating up this kitchen beautifully, but also it lends like an aesthetic modern feel to the kitchen, makes it look amazing. And I really, really love this rad. So I'm really, really pleased with how this install's gone. If you need any more help or any more information, please visit the website at Trade Radiators. Thanks very much for watching and bye bye.